To the Big Time Show podcast that is being seen and heard live right here on Podbean, on Facebook, on YouTube, on everywhere. My God, wherever I'm at, wherever I am, I'm there. Twitch, uh, goodness, Twitter. Uh, YouTube, everywhere. Now, that don't mean because I'm everywhere. That means that everybody watching, you know what I'm saying? But at least it, it's there for you. You understand? It, it's there for you. I'm I'm on iHeartRadio. I'm on, what else? Uh, Pandora. I'm, 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 I'm just everywhere. Where, wherever I am, thank you for listening to me. If you listen to this replay, thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you for uh, hanging with me. I don't know why I have an echo uh, going on on Podbean, but it's there. This never has happened. Uh, how about that? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on. But hello, Podbean. Hey, who's that? Miss Ty? You on Podbean? Do you hear echo? Do you hear echo? Type that in. Hello to... My brother Tavis, I see you, man. I see you in the house. Uh, those that are watching through, I uh, look like everybody's on the big time show on Facebook. Hello to everybody. I'm sharing right now before I get started. I uh, hope that you will do me a favor and just share to every with everyone. I see you. The consciousness is in. My brother Kevin Carey is in the house. What's up, man? How y'all doing on this great Saturday evening? I'm fired up a little bit. Uh, first of all, I just came from my son's basketball game in which his team flat out dominated uh, his guys. Uh, they were flat out awesome today. Uh, and I enjoyed every second of it. Uh, hello, Joyce Chung, who just entered in and Albert on Podbean. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, never seen you guys before, but welcome to the big time show podcast. What is going on? Do me a favor. If you hang with me, why don't you follow the show? Uh, and I would appreciate it. I'm still sharing right now. We're getting ready to talk Cowboys in just a second because you already know I'm I'm coming. I, I I ain't said nothing about what's been going on. It's coming. I, I, I'm I'm ready. Uh, but my son just had a big game. They won 35 to seven. Dominant defensive performance. 
And my son was the leading scorer today with 11 points, nine rebounds, and five uh, five steals. But, I mean, but who's counting? I mean, who's counting? I mean, you know, I just I just read the stat line. I wasn't counting or nothing. You know, I just, yeah, you know. <laughs> I was very proud today. He he came to play today. Uh, he lit it up today. So I'm very happy about that. I'm still sharing. Forgive me for not looking. I'm ready to rock now. What's going on, y'all? Look, let me just go ahead and just start off with, with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky Seals Jones back. Watch. It. Yeah, I know. He's been activated. Yeah. Yeah. My brothers are already filling, filling you guys in if you're watching with some of the updates to the roster, uh, Cowboys roster, and also uh, the Washington football team, uh, you know, what they're doing. Hey, I know y'all see my little screen here. You know, it's a little Christmas time, so I had a little, you know, a little Frosty the Snowman in the corner there for you, you know. <laughs> a little Christmas tree snow, you know. A little production, you know how it go. You know, little, you know, I gotta get into the Christmas spirit. Today, since my son won today, I'm not in a Grinch mode. I'm I'm not in a bar humbug mode. I'm 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 pretty excited today. So uh good to see you guys on the day. Um the Army Navy game is on. Uh, uh I'm a former army person, so uh, you know, I'm cheering for Army to win. Kevin, I I see that, and I was gonna get into that, but I tell you what, I gonna start with this since you brought it up, since it's fresh. <laughs> Tavis said, "Ho ho ho!" Listen to the Grinch anthem. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I won't be, the, but but see, it's some things that make you in the Grinch mode. I was gonna start somewhere, but since my brother Kevin done cr- crunk that up, I just go ahead and start. Right there with the news that Tony Pollard, you know, if it ain't one thing, it's another with us, with the Cowboys. I mean, just when you think things are about to, we about to come to the to the table with full bullet guns locked and loaded, something always happened, and here we go again. So let's just be honest, y'all. No, y'all ain't gonna like it, but I one of our well, I, I almost want to say at least for the last month, our most productive back seems as if, and it really only make common sense if he does not play tomorrow. Most of you know that Tony Pollard has plantar uh, plantar for for ISIS, whatever however you pronounce it, tear in the foot. Um, well, it's not a tear. Is 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 not a tear. Uh, is is they, they wish that he did tear it, uh, but it's not a tear, and it's probably gonna keep him out on tomorrow, which means that you know we already been crying about Ezekiel Elliott and his production. Uh, obviously he's gonna go at it again, but who's gonna, you know if. <laughs> I, I, you know, until Zeke Elliott's, you know, he's had 10 days, but his injury requires more than 10 days, you know, to get him full back. I mean, he can go out there, but will he be functional? I, I don't know. Maybe 10 days did it. I don't know. Uh, I hope so. But in the meantime, the Cowboys signed uh, Edo Smith from Atlanta, in which Coach McCarthy said in his press conference the other day that he's already somewhat caught up. Uh, with the offense now, I don't quite believe that. I'm quite sure he knows a few plays that he can uh, contribute on. I'm quite sure he knows some type of uh, pass blocking and maybe some formations, maybe. Uh, but you know, he came from Atlanta. Um, he doesn't know killing more offense, so maybe it's just a little package deal with him. Uh, as you can see uh, earlier, Mr. Hardy. Uh, he's back. Uh, he's been activated for tomorrow. Um, so Jay Corn Hardy, uh, who, if you remember, was on Hard Knocks, the young kid that wore the uh, the glasses. If you remember him, um, he's been activated. So 
Um, you know, it's obvious if they if they got Smith and Hardy, what that's telling you is obviously is that somebody probably gonna be sitting down tomorrow. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be Tony Pollard. Uh, you just hate that. You hate it because we all know what Pollard brings to the table. Uh, don't even have to say that. And it's just, again, bad timing for us. You know, it's, it's really just a matter of who we're going to line up with every week. And, and you know, you just got to take our chances. But you hate to see some of our most productive players uh, get hurt at this time. Uh, so we're just going to have to see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Zeke Elliott is all right because I guarantee you he'll get tested tomorrow. We'll find out how much he's done. But usually what happens is Zeke Elliott may go from maybe about two series and then all of a sudden he raises his hand up and go to the sideline and start uh, limping off and he's no more good for the rest of the game. Okay? It's, 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 it's just no question. So, the load is going, you know, a big load or at least a gigantic piece uh, will fall on the head, you know, looks like on the heads of either Smith or Mr. Hardy. Uh, hope they're ready. Uh, that's, I mean, you know, hope they're ready. That's the only thing I can, I can say. Uh, which, which, which again leads to this. I hope y'all ain't putting all y'all eggs in the basket talking about running the football. I mean, I mean, do y'all, I mean, come on now. I, I, if Pollard and look with Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott there, they didn't run the ball. I mean, let's just be honest. <laughs> they didn't run the ball with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard there. Okay. Hey, Micah Evans, Micah Evans done join me on. Pod Bean, it looked like. Oh, I guess you have, or you may be back on the other spot. Okay. Uh, hey, Mike, you from YouTube. I saw you jumped on Pod Bean, but you're on YouTube. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you, Mike. Um, listen, they weren't running the ball. Will y'all be honest? They were not running the ball with Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott there. They weren't. Now, what in the world do you think they're going to do? What do you think Kellen Moore going to do? Come on now. With, let's just say Ezekiel Elliott and Edo Smith. What do you, what do you think? What do you think he going to do? <laughs> what, do, what do you think they going to do? I mean, come on now. What do you think they going to do with Edo Smith and Jaquan Hardy? Man, Dak Prescott is about to throw the ball 50 times tomorrow. Do y'all understand me? Hey, look, let's, 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 Let's start calling a spade a spade. I don't know how much more we got to prove. I know what everybody wants, you know, but, you know, I, do I want it? Yes, I want it too, but it, it, look, I've seen enough. I, I He is not going to run the football tomorrow. You know, I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, Kevin says, talking about Connor Williams. Uh, he needs to be starting over Connor McGovern. That's what Kevin is saying. And I agree totally because what we thought what would happen has not happened. We thought putting McGregor in, Con- not McGregor, McGovern in, I'm sorry, Connor McGovern in, we thought that that was just the end all of the star line that we ready to roll now. Connor McGovern has been a downgrade from Connor Williams uh, in the run game. At least we were running the ball when Connor Williams was there. It's just none. Now, Connor Williams got beat up and had a whole bunch of penalties, as we know. He got beat up on select I mean, select defensive tackles. Uh, but overall, running the football, they were moving people. Uh, I agree. He, I think that he needs to come back in, but I think they really believe in McGovern, and I believe they're just going to roll with it. Uh I really believe that's gonna happen. So I'm not. I'm, but I, I, I'm still saying the same thing. Even with, if you put Connor Williams in, you still gonna have the same problem. Kellen Moore just cannot help himself, and let's throw in Dak Prescott also. He can't help himself because he'll change the play. I'm just let. Let's just call a spade a spade. 
Let's just call him Spade a Spade. Kellen Moore passed the football. Accept it. Believe in it. Because <laughs> it's going to happen. He's not throwing, He's not running. So we'll be talking about this tomorrow after the game. Like, why won't he run it? Why? I guarantee it. It's going to happen. Matter of fact, let me go on since y'all, some of y'all here now. Since since you know Pollard probably is not playing tomorrow. We know Ezekiel Elliott. Well, we think that he's still somewhat hampered by his injury. Let me go on and get a poll now. How many times do you think that Dak Prescott is going to throw the ball tomorrow? Give me a number. Give me a number. Because there ain't nothing wrong with Gallup, Cooper, and Lamb, which is what Kellen Moore believe in anyway. I just want to know for everybody here, whoever's here, how many times do you believe Dak Prescott is going to throw the ball tomorrow? Now, how many times are you going to complete it? How many pass attempts do you believe he's going to have? I'm going to start it off. I'm going to say he's going to throw the ball uh, 40, 42 times tomorrow. Y'all think I'm crazy, don't you? I know. There it is. Mike Evans was right on me. Mike Evans was typing why I said it. He said 45 times. I said 42. How many times y'all think he's going to run the ball? I bet I mean, pass the ball tomorrow. Appreciate it, Mike. How many times? How many times? How many times? How many times? I, I just don't believe in Kellen Moore. I believe we could run it if we tried. But y'all know, y'all, we done seen enough evidence to know what, what Kellen Moore does if the run game ain't working on the first two or three carries. We already know what's going to happen there. I mean, come on now. I don't know how much he say. Kevin said, I got to see first if they sell out to stop the run. Then, of course, we pass more than we throw. Kevin, I think we you already know. what that, that's, that's every team that we play. That's That's the strategy. That is the strategy, actually, against us. That you, you know, beforehand, before when we was real hot, uh, they were so scared of the receivers that they played that two shell high look all the time. Most teams did. They didn't get aggressive like that. Uh, and maybe finally with everybody back, we might hopefully see that again. Uh, that was that was just a fear factor. That's I agree with you on the part. That's what we just got to see. But I, I just um, see everybody can't line up, play man to man, and against us because you don't have that type of personnel that can handle that. Especially when you got the kind of receivers that we do have, you really ask him to get fifty put on you. Then, and Washington has lost a few guys. Everybody talking about Chase Young and. Um, um, Montez Sweat, uh, but they lost a few more uh, in the secondary, and so you some teams that that you know can't be so aggressive in playing man to man if you don't have that type of personnel. Um, it, it's 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 just you know that part we just have to. I agree with Kevin. We just got to see on that part, but. Um, I just believe that they ain't going to let us run absolutely nothing. And I just believe that going to throw the ball 40 plus times tomorrow. I just believe it. Because if you really want to be truthful about it, yeah, Mike, Logan Thomas, that's a killer for us. Logan Thomas, their tight end, who has killed us over the years. He's not playing tomorrow as well. That's a big loss for them. Uh, but – you know, as far as is our offense goes, if you want to be truthful about our offense, you want to be really truthful. The strength of our offense is the appearance of those three receivers out there, because they must be respected. You can't you can't play around with that. All of them have the ability to have a thousand yard year. All of them, Gallup, Lamb, and Cooper. 
You got a quarterback who can throw for almost 5,000 yards a year. You don't want it, but he can because the skill set of the receivers is so good. Ziggy Elliott has been on the decline the last two two years at least. So let's not let's just call it like it is. The offensive line has been beat up, hurt. Guys missed plenty of games from the right tackle all the way to the left tackle. Guy been missing games. The strength of this team, I know everybody want to say it's the offensive line and running the game. No. Nope. Look at look where the money is. The money's in receiving court with the exception of Gallup. The money, and, and Lamb too, but, you know, Lamb's on a rookie contract. But I'm just saying, we're talking, that is the strength of this team. We paid the quarterback not to hand the ball off. We drafted. We didn't have no choice with Lamb. He was just sitting right there for us. But you draft a lamb not to have him pass blocking, I mean run blocking. You draft him to put points on the board. Cooper demands a double team steal. The strength of this team is the, is the wide receiver core. No doubt about it. But again, that's my point. That's my view. You may think differently, and it could be debated. No doubt about it. But it, I really do hate if Tony Pollard and to be honest with you, when you have uh, the injury that he has, you really don't want him to play. You don't. Uh, you know, if his foot is bad, you certainly not expecting him to run too good, right? I mean, <laughs> look, <laughs> breaking news, you cannot run without your feet. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I mean, hey, it's kind of like Ziggy Elliott. It's hard to run. When your knee is hurt, I mean, I, you know, it's hard to run when you're getting hit on it. You know what I'm saying? When you're getting hit on your knee and you got a, a deep knee bruise in the knee, getting hit on it don't make it better. <laughs> I'm just breaking news. <laughs> it don't make it better. If you got, if you have plantar uh, fasciitis or however you pronounce it in your foot, Running on it don't make it better. You, you gotta, you need to, you need to rest it. And he, although I hate that the pilot is is very much needed, no doubt about it. But we'll need him more later on down the road, rather than, uh, you know, it's a good shot that he might tear that thing. Remember, it's one torn. Usually, from what Mike McCarthy says, I said earlier, usually. Uh, you want that thing to tear so you can go ahead and get the healing. You don't want it kind of lingering where it don't, and that's what Paul it is. So it's, 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 a, it's a very risky type play if you were to play him. So my view, although I hate to say it, uh, but it's obvious he needs to sit down. But you know the Cowboys, I thought it was obvious that Ezekiel Elliott needs to sit down. We all see that, don't we? Ziggy Ellis still playing. Uh, so I don't I don't know what the Cowboys. I, I'm not even predicting. I'm just gonna I'm just like my guy Kevin on here. The conscious, I'm just like him. I'm just gonna turn on the TV and, and let's just see who line up. Because <laughs> it, it the Cowboys do things differently. What they should do, they don't. And what they shouldn't do, they do. <laughs> so I mean I I I just I just wanna see who just gonna line up and Hey, let's play. Which leads, of course, to what we, what the world is talking about. You know, I guarantee, you know, oh, you know, come on now. First of all, let's just get it out the way. The media has blown this up tremendously. And, you know, when people quote people, you, you usually want to get the proper context of what things will happen. If you listen to the interview, from Coach McCarthy, it was not as the way that the media is portraying it to be. But when you're looking for any type of edge, you'll make it be what you want it to be. That is what's, that's what's going on with the Washington football team who has taken uh, Coach McCarthy's words and has used it 
as bulletin board material. What's up to leave? I see you. Uh, I see you. Oh my goodness. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin put the nail. I'm gonna put his comment up here. The conscious does it again. Look what he says. That's all we got to do. That, 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 that's all we got to do. We got to, we got we got to play physical. Do y'all see that? To, to my previous, uh, conversation. That's all we got to do. However, I say this, Kevin, when we start talking about playing physical football, you ain't playing no physical football when all your play calls is, is the, the offensive line going backwards, pass blocking. That's, that's, that's not physical. You're playing on your heels. I got a feeling that's what it's going to be, though. You ain't got to change the lay on these guys. I hope I'm wrong. I, I really do. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that we get at least 25 carries tomorrow, 25 to, to 28 carries. But, you know, you're, you're almost asking for the, the impossible with that, with uh with Kellen Moore. I mean, it's it just don't – it's just not him. And I'm not, and I'm not faulting him. I, it, 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 you know, if it is, look, he's he is what he is. He's he is that. I wish people would accept it and stop trying to make him be a uh, Earl Campbell, or, you know, Derrick Henry type running uh, running back, uh, running uh, offensive coordinator. That's just not him. It's not. That's not his philosophy. It's not. It's not. And I, I'm 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 about sick now. We all the way in. I'm I'm tired of everybody holding on this dream, like like we're gonna run football forty times a game. It's not going to happen. You don't believe me? Go look at the stats. All you gotta do is look at the stats this year. You should let it speak for itself. It's not gonna happen. But back to Coach McCarthy. Hey, yes, sir. To leave, I'm coming. I'm coming to leave. I see your point. I'm coming. You, 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 you pushing me, but I'm coming. I'm coming right to that point right there. Uh, the the media has made this bigger than what it is. And Washington, you knew they were gonna bite on it and and use this bulletin board material and coach, uh, coach, uh, Lord have mercy. Jesus, I forgot the boy's name already. Uh, what's what's the head coach name in Washington? Man, it's on my tongue. Let's see, Coach Rivera. Coach Rivera. Coach Rivera is, uh, you know, he's responded to it, and you can tell he. They say he's already told his team. Look, the bottom line is this: you don't need no extra motivation for this game. You, 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 hey, hey, what's up, Joe? Appreciate you, man. You don't need no extra motivation for this game. This is the Cowboys against the Washington. If you don't feel that energy just from the start, on the road, I may add, where you know you're hated, you're hated in that building. You know it's going to be a lot of Cowboy fans tomorrow, but you know that building does not like us. They, they, they probably met us at the airport. This city does not like us. We they never have. We don't like them. You don't need no extra motivation, but if you want to make up a story, so be it. I I love it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And you know what else I like about it? This is the other part I like about it. The cowboys fed into it also. Did y'all hear some of the interviews of the players? responding to their coach. Did you hear the leader of the team, Dak Prescott, use an expletive when he first when they first asked him about the guarantee or the supposed guarantee from Coach McCarthy? Did you hear Dak Prescott cuss they had to bleep it out? Oh my goodness. They the Cowboys have bought into it. So we come into the game tomorrow with, with some fire. At warm-ups, I wouldn't be surprised if it's some trash talk, maybe even a borderline fight right there before the game. Ron Rivera has told his team, you know, all this, all that, and using it to get them fired up, and I'm quite sure they're going to be ready to play. I'm quite sure of that. 
And I'm quite sure, based on what I heard from Dak and uh, Mari Cooper, these guys are saying, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let me tell you why this is a huge, huge game. And then I move to the defense side of football. This is why it's a huge game, y'all. Because if the Cowboys win tomorrow, this division is over. Now, I'm not, and I technically speaking, it's not over, but that's what, that'll turn into a three-game lead. And we're not losing four out of the next five. It's just, it's not going to happen. This division will be over. Don't forget now, three Game lead plus the tiebreaker at the point. And I know we playing them in two weeks in Dallas. I understand that. But you got the tiebreaker over them because you just beat them. So really, essentially, that's really almost like a four-game lead. This division is over if we win tomorrow. It's, 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 it's over. It's over. It's, it's no question in my mind. It's over. No, I don't have no question about it. If we lose, however, then... Uh, it's going to get a little tight. We're still in control, but it's going to get a little tight because they're going to come to Dallas in a couple of weeks, and and they should be uh, they, they win tomorrow. It's down to essentially a one game lead. So really, to be honest with you, this is what this is why I say I'm glad that they they bought into the little hype that's going on. Because Washington, the truth be told, their playoffs start tomorrow. Yeah. If they lose this game tomorrow, it's, 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 they can go on start getting ready for the draft. Yeah. We ain't losing no three-game lead with five. Uh, no, that that's – yeah, yeah. To leave, I'm surprised the NFL didn't move the time slot for this game from 1 o'clock – to late afternoon for TV raid. I'm going to take it a step further to lead. I don't know if we're in the flex thing yet, but I, I'm kind of shocked that uh, uh, as big of a game this is, and since you know the whole world watching, uh, and they will be watching at 12, I thought that probably there's a good chance that we can see this game on Sunday night. I don't know if we're flexing yet. I don't know if they're flexing. I, I think we may be a, a week or two off from the flex thing, but this would have been a huge TV rating for Sunday night. Uh, no doubt about that. No question. Uh, the Cowboys generate the biggest ratings on Sunday night anyway. But you add all this drama that's going on, uh, you bring in the Washington fan base because there's plenty of them too. You have a monumental uh, TV rating on tomorrow night. So I get what you're saying, but I'll go on take it a step further. By as you know, trying to figure out why they didn't play Sunday night, I'm, I just don't think the flicks uh, thing has started yet. Joe said we win tomorrow, then you can rest Zeke for the New York Giants game. Uh, that's a big. And then Mike says right now Dallas is favored by four point five. That's big. That's a big. That's a big point spread, especially when you're on the road. Usually the home team gets a three three point uh, favorite. You know, according to Vegas, but you now you're going with uh, you're going with they're going with Dallas and 4.5, so that's that's a big spread, uh, no doubt about that. Now, Zeke, uh, from what Joe said, uh, the interesting thing, only thing I'm gonna see about Zeke because one thing we will have to give him credit for. The knee is obviously not right, but he finishes every game. Now, he has to take a break in between and all that kind of stuff, but he has played, uh, and he starts off as best as he can, then all of a sudden he loses. But the question is, how well or how much did he improve in the injury in these 10 days? Now, keep in mind, common sense will tell you, Although he practiced, he did not get hit on his knee. So he has not been hit at least uh, since the last game we played. 
I'm quite sure he's received all type of treatment. Uh, and he got a couple of extra days of rest, what we've been asking for. So the question is, how much did he improve in his knee in 10 days? We're not going to know that until tomorrow. Usually the, what I've said before, I guess if you want to use a sign, Zeke's always starts off first in the first series. Second series, he comes out and do that. And then middle way in the second series, he does this after he play because he need to get off his knee and he usually start limping. The question is, how long will it take before he limps? And that's if he limps. Hopefully the 10 days did a miracle for him. Hopefully he's getting treated right now. Hopefully. Uh, and hopefully he's better. That would help. No doubt about it. So that's the question. But I, even though we got all our receivers back, and even though it looked like Pollard is not going to play, Ezekiel is not 100%. You have activated Smith and Hardy to you as your running backs now. So we know the guys are injured. Somebody's going to sit down. I would assume it's going to be Pollard then I see the offense not really getting on this rhythm like everybody wanted to be like it was early in the year. That was kind of unrealistic anyway. We're at the point now in the season where you got to grind things out. Every game not going to be a pinball machine type offensive production. It's not going to happen. It's December. Uh, things get tight in December. Uh, as we all know, you're not going to score 38 points a game. You know, it's, it's just not going to happen now. So you got to grind it out, which leads now to what I'm most excited about, our defense. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go on and put it out there now. I don't care what – and I know I got a lot of Cowboy fans on right here with me now. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I got some real high expectations now. And the reason why is because of who's coming back. Gallimore is back. Randy Gregory is back. D-Law, as of last week, is back. Michael Parsons is on his way as a rookie to be first-team All-Pro. Trayvon, Mr. Lord Have Mercy Diggs, is without a doubt a first-team All-Pro this year. Let me let me just go ahead and tell you. Tr Tristan Hill has played well. Uh, the only thing that I'm worried, I'm not worried. I just got an APB out on on LVE. Now I've already filed the paperwork. It's in Dallas now. It's there now. Uh, I filed. I filed the paperwork, and I'm looking for him. So I got everybody out looking for him now because we ain't seen him. We he ain't made no play. He ain't been no impact. He ain't, he ain't batted the ball down. He barely making tackles. He ain't fun, caused no fumble. He ain't hardly making tap. He ain't, he ain't making no tackles. I mean, have anybody seen LV? Don't worry about it. I, the, the paperwork has been filed. There's a there's an APB out. They've already alerted the officials in Washington. We're looking for him. That's the only part about my defense. And I know some of you saying Anthony Brown. I get it. Uh, but I'm okay with Anthony Brown. I am. But with the additions of Gallimore and Gregory, with D-Law back there, here's, here's what I'm about to throw out. These last few weeks left in this season, this defense is about to turn, watch this, dominant. It's about to flip, y'all. Well, we were depending on our offense to carry us through. It's about to flip, barring injury, of course. I really do believe that this defense is about to take over, at least on this team. I really do believe with the way that Curse is playing, with the way that Diggs is playing, with the way that Michael Parsons is playing. If Gregory is anywhere near what he was 
if Gregory is, is anywhere where he was before he got injured, it's really fit to get crazy. D law is just getting his rhythm back. And he was incredibly disruptive Sunday last week. I don't have to say anything about Mr. Parsons who've been doing it all year. Once you mix all that together, the, the other question is Mr. Gallimore. You know, I, I, I know he back. He's a name, but the question still remains. Can we stop the run? Cause we're going to get tested tomorrow. We're about to we're about to find out if we can stop the run. I mean, it's it's been the same question for the last three four years. I mean, we we at it again. Hopefully, Gallimore, Tristan Hill, and Bo Hanna, and you know the and OC. Hopefully, they can get the job done up the middle. Up the middle is where our problem is. Antonio Gibson, who is of course from here in Memphis. Uh, who played ball here in Memphis, I'm sorry. So I'm quite familiar with him. He is the NFC leading rusher, the NFC leading rusher. And the reason why, because he's good. And there's no doubt about that. Y'all remember what he did to us last year. Uh, he was he was dominant against us. So the they're going to run the football tomorrow. Can we finally stop the run? If we could do that, it's going to be lights out because there's no team alive that can handle D-Law, Parsons, and Gregory. No team alive. No team alive can handle that. In a pass rush situation, you cannot handle that. You throw Osi up there in the middle of that also, you really, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's about to get ridiculous, y'all. I really feel like that our defense is getting ready to take over this team. Combined, I, I really feel like it. With the turnovers that we're generating, now you add incredible pressure to it where the ball going to have to come out a little quicker than usual. When you got a guy like Diggs who seems like if you make one mistake, he going to get it. Uh, the ball's got to come. I'm, I'm serious. I just feel like this defense is about to take over. I really feel like it. I'm expecting us to go up in defensive rankings. Uh, just because of the people that's coming back. Hopefully, you guys can stay healthy on tomorrow. Um, I that's I, I I just don't I don't see how you can add this type of talent back to your defense and don't think that it's going to be a tremendous change. I, I just don't see how you can. I mean, you can't add this type of talent and think, okay, well, everything going to stay the same. No sir, no ma'am, no sir, no ma'am. This type of talent that's being added to this defense is what carry you to the next level, huh? I mean, it, it's it. I mean, you can't add this. You, uh, you think Parsons is dominant now? When you get Gregory and D Law on the field at the same time with him, I mean, come on now. I mean, come on. That it, it, it don't get worse. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> it, it it doesn't get worse. It, it becomes that much better. Uh, and so I'm I'm expecting this defense. To, I I believe Henneke is gonna get hit tomorrow several times. Uh, because you can't hold this. The offensive line is not good. They've had problems this year. So. They're going to try to slow us down by running the ball. I, that was my only question mark. Can we finally stop the run or at least when we need to? Can we put them in third and in long situations, third and eight, third and third and seven plus, third and seven plus when, when I know the guys are coming? Uh, that's going to be big. Now, there's another thing about it's just not Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick. Is nasty too, very nasty. They have a good one-two punch. Uh, both of them uh, need to be watched. So we're gonna get tested running on, on our running game. I mean tomorrow. Uh, that was my only flaw about our defense. What's up, E. Kush? I see you. Uh, that's my only question mark about our defense. When I always have said, when we finally get everybody back. Can we stop the run? 
That was my only question. I need LVE to show up now because this is where he can help us. Because once he gets his hands on you, he'll bring you down now. I need LVE, the missing person report is out on him. I, I need him to, to show up tomorrow. I already know what Parsons going to do. I, I, you know, somebody might say, well, Neil is weak. Uh, Neil is going, Neil is going to make some tackles tomorrow. I need LVE to reach back or whatever you got to do as young as he is and, and turn into LVE that we remember because he, he, he is incredibly quiet this year for, especially in the contract year. He is, he has done absolutely nothing as far as I'm concerned. And this would be a great way for him to get in the game, uh, get his head in the game and get, get some stats on the board. I need my stars to have stats tomorrow. That's what I want on my, on the defense. I need my stars to have some stats tomorrow, whatever those stats are. If, if D law can't get to the quarterback, fine. Give me some pressures. I ain't never been one. If if Gregory can't get there, make sure that I get some pressures. And even if Parsons can't get there, at least make the quarterback get rid of the ball quicker than what he wants to. I need LVE to at least give me at least seven to, to eight, seven to ten tackles. Because he's going to get a chance to do that because they're going to run the ball tomorrow. I got to have it tomorrow. I got to have it. Uh, they have a legitimate wide receiver, Mr. McLaughlin, who I'm going to assume, I would assume that Diggs is going to see him. I, and if Diggs is on McLaughlin, good. I'll take my chances. Uh, that's what I'm going to assume. What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, what's up, Gary? Exactly, Tavis. I need, I need the one that has not, that has that type of cachet. I need the one player on our team that's been an all pro. I need the one that we spent a first round pick on in LVE for the first time. I need him to show up tomorrow. He's going to get, he's going to have his opportunities because they are going to run the football tomorrow. It's a Ron, Ron Riviera team. You know anything about Ron Riviera? Guess what? They run the football. He got two good running backs. They are going to run. I need LVE to show up tomorrow. I've been looking for him all year. I ain't found him. I got people. I got his face on milk cars in Dallas, in Washington right now. They they going to meet him in Washington if he show up. I'm looking for him. I've already put the paperwork out on him. No, uh, Joe, it hasn't been confirmed about Pollard, but he has plantar fasciitis in his, in his foot and it's not torn, which is actually what Coach McCarthy say you wish it was torn. That way you can go ahead and get the healing process when it's not torn and get real tricky playing on it. So if you don't know, Joe, uh, the Cowboys signed Edo Smith, uh, from the Falcons as a you know one of the running backs from the Falcons, he's on the team and it come to my attention. Someone in here said earlier that uh, Jaquan Hardy, if you remember Hardy on Hard Knocks, it was the guy, the running back that had the glasses on. If you remember him, the uh, one that wore the little Clark Kent looking glasses on under his helmet, he's been activated. So that common sense kind of tell you if you. Uh, if you have two running backs, one just signed this week, then you activated one from the practice squad, that ought to tell you that uh, somebody's not playing tomorrow because usually you don't care for running backs. So uh, somebody's sitting out tomorrow. I would assume that somebody would be Pollard. So uh, I think that's kind of – I think that's a safe bet that Pollard would not play tomorrow. Bad timing because we sure he was, he was getting hot again. Uh, but I think we'll be all right. But here, Joe, if you just join me, like I said before, I really don't, you know, I don't put too too much into that in the first place because Kellen Moore don't run the football. <laughs> I mean, 
uh, look, he don't run even with Ezekiel and Pollard was there. He didn't run the football, so I, you know, I I, I don't think so. Gary said, "Yeah, you talking about AV? Yeah, he need to show up. Yeah, AV been somewhere blowing up bubbles all year. <laughs> Jaquan Harder, yeah, he's nice back." Blind as a bat without his glasses on. That's true. We found that out. Uh, Kevin said, I'm rooting for the kid hard. He just needs an opportunity. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say about that, Kevin, is I just don't know, you know, how much of an opportunity he would really get. However, now that I'm talking, let's just be honest with you. Hardy knows the offense more, probably, well, ain't no probably. He does know the offense more than uh, than Smith, and that got to count for something. Uh, Smith just getting in, just got signed this week. Uh, Coach McCarthy said that he's picked up the offense, you know, the plays that he has, but Hardy, you know, knows the playbook. Uh, I think that got to count for something, so I'm going to take that back. Uh, he just might, you know, he might be, he might be the back. Um, he might be the back behind. He just might be, you know, it could be. What's up, Miller? He could be the back right behind uh far as knowledge goes. I take that. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you, uh, Gary. Clemens, yeah, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for Clemens to get in. I don't know why he he can't get an opportunity. He should be the back behind where well, he was the back behind Tony Pollard. So it just seemed to me that he should move up. And I know what Clemens can do. Most of us know who've been watching ball know that Corey Clemens can flat out play. So I, I just believe that we are, uh, hey, we, it, we like like Kevin said earlier. We just gonna have to see who line up. <laughs> you know that they, they got five running backs. We know Ezekiel's gonna start. Pollard probably will not play. I think that's a real safe bet. Then here come the mystery after that. Is it Hardy? Well, excuse me. Is it Clements? Should be Clements. Is it Hardy or is it Smith? That's the question. Uh, that's the question. We just trying to be honest with you, man. We all knew with this extra, with this long schedule this year, and when you throw in COVID in and the way guys are, you know, finding out in the middle of the week that they have it, even though they don't have symptoms and all that kind of stuff. The you know, bottom line is you got to be gone 10 days. So I've been saying it from the beginning. Whoever's left standing at the end with the team mostly intact, that's the team that's going to win the Super Bowl. For real. Uh, you know, these bodies, these bodies that we have, and even though those guys are obviously in way better shape than most of us are in, the human body ain't designed to take that type of punishment for almost 20, 20 some odd weeks. You know, it is is it is really gonna be a boil down to who who is the most healthiest team and who can survive the COVID pandemic. You got a lot of stars who are falling by the wayside because of COVID. Then you mix in the injuries of players that are really being out. It's really going to, you know, can can you win without some of your star players? That's what it's going to boil down to. And you just hope that your depth chart is so good or at least good enough that, that can, you can get by. Uh, you know, if Pollard is not there, and if Ezekiel Elliott is not is playing like the way he is now, and that's injured, if you do you find a dude, you know, decide to run the football, can Clements, can can Smith, can Hardy do it? That's 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 what it's gonna boil down to. Can can those guys be effective enough that that you're able to function? Uh, in the absence of your top two running backs? That's the question. 
Uh, and, you know, I, that's a question that a lot of teams are going through. Uh, Baltimore comes to mind. J.K. Dobbins gone. Gus Edwards tore his ACL. They had Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell's not on the team anymore. Now they got uh, uh, Devontae Freeman as their running back. That's their fourth or fifth running back on this team. Can can those type of guys carry you through? That's that's the question. That's a lot of a lot of teams got there. Kansas City had lost uh Edwards Herrera and uh, you know, they had they still had Williams, but they really want to give him the ball too much. You know, you gotta find out. Kyler Murray goes down for Arizona. Can Colt McCoy win you one or two ball games and keep the keep the things, you know, floating? Until he comes back, the Cardinals did that. They won. That's why they still lead. Got the best record in the NFC now. Now, now, Kyler Murray is back. Can your can your bottom guys keep you at the level where you at for one or two games so that the big dogs come back and you go to work? We've had that position on defense. That's why I'm excited about the defense because we we didn't have D Law. We didn't have Gregory for a nice period of time. We ain't had Gallimore at all this year, except that we had Gallimore. These guys are coming back. So the question is, did our defense hold up? I say a resounding yes. No, we didn't play like the 85 Chicago Bears, but we were opportunistic enough that we made a difference on defense with all these interceptions that we have, that we have right now. That, 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 they held up. They held up without the big pass rushers. The defense held up. They did. And now we got the big dogs coming. So since they here, oh, my God, I'm looking for domination. I'm looking for flat-out disruption. That's what that's, I'm talking about, havoc. That's what I'm talking about. When you, when you get a Gregory and a D-Law and a Parsons on your team, and I'm going to throw in Gallimore, when you get that on your team, you should demand nothing less than flat out havoc, insanity at coming at the quarterback. It just is it's no other way to, to look at it. Huh? It is it, is no other way to look at it. I'm looking for flat out craziness, insanity. That's what I'm looking for. Tomorrow. I'm looking for that tomorrow. I don't know what Gregory looked like. I'm, I'm going to assume he wouldn't be out there if his calf was not right. He's had way more longer in, in, in on the sideline than Dak did. Dak missed one game. He was back the next week. Gregory has missed the last three, four games. So I, I hope his knee is, I'm sorry, his calf is, is whatever the problem was. They didn't let us in on it. But it's obvious that his calf strain was worse than Dax was. So that's I think that's common sense. It's really simple. If he's back to where he was, then ladies and gentlemen, I, I expect nothing but flat out destruction. Havoc. That's that's what I expect. This defense fit to turn it up a notch, man. That's what I want. That I said all what I said just to tell y'all this. I'm expecting the defense to take completely over. They are going to be as crazy as this may sound, y'all. Trust me when I say this. This is just what I this is just my expectation. I'm expecting the defense to be uh the strongest point of this team these next four, five, six games. Yes, over the offense. Sound crazy what I just said. I just can't see how I can't I can't be expected with the talent level that's coming back mixed in with what we already have and see how they've already produced. I I I, I just can't see how I can't expect nothing less than they're about to turn this thing up. Let me throw a name that ain't playing that's not playing, but he's coming back too. Donovan Wilson hadn't been playing. I uh, mean, come on. We still got some pieces that we can add to this thing and make it even better. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
I love the way they have played Hooker because, you know, you're trying your best to keep him from getting injured. It's saying like a big load on him is what gets him injured. I'm impressed the way we played with Hooker this year. We preserved in him. His body is being preserved, and he's still getting plenty of snaps, but he's not, you know, getting majority of the snaps. And and I like it. I like it. I like the way they're doing him and KZ. I love it. Both of them are coming off injury, so they they switching it up. Donovan Wilson. I mean, come on now. I'm expecting this defense to turn it up to a whole different level. I'm saying like, wow. I'm I'm expecting. Let me go on put. A, let me let me go on ask y'all because I'm doing too much talking. Y'all come on talk to me. How many sacks do y'all think we're going to have tomorrow? I'm just going to put it out there. Now, look, Parsons is playing. D-Law is playing. Randy Gregory is playing. O.C. is playing. I, I'm going to go put it out here. Team, that is. Team sacks tomorrow. I'm going to say we have five. Man, I'm asking for a lot. I'm going to say five sacks tomorrow. How many of y'all think we're going to have? Team, team, team sacks. That can come from anywhere. Team sacks. How many of you sacks do y'all believe we're going to have tomorrow? Because Hennigan got to get hit tomorrow. I'm going to be very disappointed if we got less than three. I'm going to be... I'm going to be very disappointed if we got less than three sacks. Oh, my God. Miller. Miller done went. <laughs> Miller done shot for the sky. <laughs> Miller, <laughs> Miller, I was trying to be. My goodness. Miller said we're going to have seven sacks. If we have seven sacks, that, it ain't going to be close. Gary said, if you need three yards to get a first down, Harder will get you three. If you need five yards for a first down, Harder will get you three. Well, you, first of all, Gary, you ain't got to worry about that because, shoot, on third and one, we throwing the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's what Kellen Moore do. <laughs> so, so, you know, third and three, you know he passing the ball. I mean, come on. We talking about Kellen Moore. Come on now. Joe says tomorrow our defense will will be like the Oprah Winfrey show. You get sacks and you get sacks. How many though, uh, Joe? <laughs> How many? How many you think we're gonna find up with, Gary? <laughs> Gary, you, you, I mean, look. Let's let's look. Let's not act like we don't know who Kellen Moore is now. Let's just let's stop that. Let's not act like he he. he no. This guy throwing it on third and inches. <laughs> Come on now. He won't even do a quarterback sneak. He dropping that back five yards, trying to get a little rub route or pick route or something. Come on now. This this, this Kellen Moore, bubble screen. You know I mean? Come on now. It's Kellen Moore. You don't run the ball. We know that. Joe, how many, Joe, how many sacks are you counting tomorrow? I see you said you get sacked. Everybody else is on here. Joe says six sacks. And two interceptions. So he's one more than me. <laughs> Kill him all. Tech mobile OC. Exactly. <laughs> Let me, I'm just calling it like it is. Joe says six sacks. Let me put it up there for him. He says six sacks and two interceptions. Wow. I said five. I said I ain't got the interceptions, but I just said five sacks. I, I said five. But he said six, six, six. I, I, you know, I think to tell you, now Miller says seven. I mean, that's, and, and you know what? It ain't so far-fetched, y'all. It's really not because their offensive line is banged up. And they ain't seeing this type of speed they're about to see tomorrow. Do y'all realize the speed that's about to come at them tomorrow? I mean, come on now. Parsons and Gregory and D-Law, that type of speed. Come on now. 
He could say it. I see five at least. I just what I got five minimum. At least one interception, one fumble recovery. See, some of those sacks, one of them, one or two of them gonna be a strip sack, too. Now y'all know that. Y'all know D Law swipe down, and that's one thing Parsons ain't learned yet. You don't see that. Gregory does the same thing. What's up, Hot Rod? I see you. Uh, the good and the bad and ugly truth that's on Pod being his podcast. Appreciate you, Rod, for joining in. The question at hand, Rod, is how many sacks do you see with the guys that are coming back uh, with Gregory and um, Gallimore there? And you also already, D-Law came back last week, and we already know what Michael Parsons done. Uh, how many sacks are you do you really believe that we can uh, get tomorrow? That's the question at hand. Uh, Joe says two for Parsons, two D Law, and two Gregory. Now, here's the real issue. So you can have all these bullets in your gun, like we have, and don't know how to shoot. So you can you can have one of them guns Rambo had in the movie, but if you don't know what to do with it, you just got a decoration piece, which leads to this. And I'm not even worried about it because we got a great defensive coordinator. And Quinn, he'll know what to do. But with Gregory and D-Law back, those are your two ends. Ain't no such thing as talking about we're going to drop Gregory back. And no, 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 no. They're getting on the end. So a lot of us have said that's where Parson is just flat out dominant. And he is. But you're not fit to take, you're not fit to drop D-Law or Gregory back and let Parsons go on the line on the edge, which means we're back at where we were for in the middle of the year. We were saying like Parsons need to get on the edge because he's more effective rather than being in the middle. We're right back to that. But what we've seen in the last three weeks is that Parsons is dominant everywhere he goes now. He can get you in the middle, and he can get you on the edge, but he is a terror on the edge. He's he's very good in the middle. Now, we want Parsons. We don't want Parsons just to say he got pressures. No, 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 no. We want Parsons to actually get some stats. He need a sack. It's going to be kind of a little difficult for him to get up the middle and get a sack rather than on coming off the edge. Now, let's get ready for that. That's, let's get ready for that. Because Parsons, Gregory, and D-Law will be your edge rushers tomorrow, which I'm not complaining about that at all, to be honest with you. I'm not complaining about that. Uh, my dream would be that you would line Parsons up on either side with Gregory or with D-Law and let the offensive line figure that one out. But that's where LVE is going to have to be LVE control in the middle. I'm telling you, if if, if LVE joins the party, y'all, see, I called out all them names without him because he ain't done nothing. But if LVE joins the party, please understand, this defense is going to another level. It's already fit to go up, up two or three levels now. But if LVE joins this party, good Lord, it's going to be a problem. If he joins the party, I'm hoping that he comes rich. I I hope LVE, these last five, six weeks, I hope that he shows up. Uh, Gary says, a guy who watches film and has a full 40 years, Greg Cassell, NFL fan, said, this week that right now Michael Parsons is the is the best pass rusher in the league. I I I have no arguments in that. Uh, you get a, you'll get a, a few people that will say that Miles Garrett is, uh, and you can, really can't argue that. And a lot of people, of course, will throw in the name uh, T.J. Watt, but those are going to be the only two names that will bring up the debate. I understand Aaron Donald is incredible, but he hadn't had stat-wise the year that he usually has. 
Uh, it's not saying he's going down, but it's just Michael Parsons has elevated himself in his rookie year. And keep in mind, it's just raw talent. He ain't really learned the position yet. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You check this kid out in about another two, three years. Lord, ooh, a flat-out dominant football player. Uh, but he's going to be a first-team All-Pro this year at, with raw talent. I mean, he ain't learned the position. He don't know how to use his hands quite great yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he, he just, he just raw talent. He beating people off speed, really raw speed this year. He, he has them look quick and, you know, start outside, juke the tackle and, and shoot inside. And because he's so fast, he can get there. So right now he just, he just using raw natural ability. He ain't learned how to use his hands yet. So, I mean, if he this good now, good God, I mean, you can imagine what this dude is going to be like in another two, three years. I mean, it's going to be, wow, just crazy good. Uh, he said, T.J. Watt is the guy I say is second. Yeah, it ain't too many guys' names going to be above him. The only two names that I think is above him, you know, that would get debate as far as being the best pass rusher is going to be T.J. and uh, and Miles Garrett from Cleveland. That's it. That's it this year. Defense would take over, y'all. He could say if they would be so worried about Parsons tanking Gregory that OC should get some favorable matchups. He could say, I agree with you more. I'm just calling those three names out, but it could come from somewhere else. I mean, let's think about it. OC is there who can get to the quarterback. We ain't even talked about uh, Jordan Lewis blitzing. I mean, come on now. I mean, did, these sacks can come from anywhere. When you got this type of talent that's coming back, they can hold up stuff and this type of pressure. I mean, the sacks could come from some somebody gonna get a bunch of one on ones. And if 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 you if my dream, yeah, well, Tristan Hill's already back. Tristan has has, has played well uh, since he's come back. Joe, you're absolutely right. Tristan Hill has played well since he come back. So I'm saying these guys and, and them those guys are gonna get one on one. Uh I don't know who you're gonna double. See, that's see, that's the thing. If you if you double D Law, for instance, that lead Gregory one on one. I mean, come on now. Uh if you double Gregory, that leave D Law one on one. I mean and good Lord, if you line up Parsons beside either one of them, <laughs> do y'all see what I'm, are y'all seeing what I'm seeing? I mean, come on now. This, this, this thing is about to crank up. It really is. It's getting ready to crank up. And I've been waiting for this because I already know what's going to happen. I said five sacks. I got some people on here say seven. I got some people on here who think he could say five with me. Somebody else said six. Uh, exactly, Gary. See, the matchups are just matchups are just crazy. Think about it. Y'all see how well Osis played? Look what Gary just said. Now y'all know how well Osis played. Now put in Gallum over side him. I mean, come on. How about this one, Gary, since you go that route? How about Gallimore and Tristan Hill? Tristan Hill's been causing problems. He's quick, too. I mean, I mean, let, let's just play the game. The NASCAR package, okay? The NASCAR package, Front your front four is going to be, if it was me now, your front four going to be O.C., Tristan Hill, Gregory, and D-Law. Can, can you can, look? I'm like Prince now. Dig if you will the picture. <laughs> Dig if you will the picture. Think, think about that. Gregory, O.C., Tristan Hill, D-Law. With a with a joker like Parsons just lingering around, who can line up anywhere. 
the, the, just just think about that for a minute. That's your NASCAR package. In other words, that's your fa- your fastest pass rushers all on the field at one time. You can't guard that. You you can't guard it. Who you gonna double? Okay, whoever you double. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm, 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 oh my God, I totally forgot about that. Ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the stall right behind it, look at Gary. I forgot about him. You got Basham, huh? Coming behind that is a person that's going to come off the injury list too. Mr. Armstrong coming back. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Do y'all see these crazy rotations? Do you understand why my expectations are high? Look at all these guys who, who who about to play together. I mean, come on. I ain't throwing in Bo Hanna and you know, I, I mean, come on now. Watkins, who's played with I mean, look at I ain't look, we ain't saying nothing about Watkins. Watkins, come on, man. This, this, bar an injury between now and tomorrow. <laughs> this is what we're getting ready to see. Do you see what I'm saying? This this defense, man, look. I, y'all should be look. I hope I hope I convince some of y'all to, to join in on my excitement level. This is about to get a little crazy. This, this well, let me put it this way. This if LVE show up, let me put let me preface that again. If some kind of way we can get him. To join the party. If he joins the party, this front seven in any combination is going to be a problem. Is and if we can get if we can get LVE, I ain't worried about Neil. I ain't worried about Neil. If I can get LVE to join the party with Parsons when they line up side by side. This thing is about to get the way curse with the way that curse is playing. Mr. Lord have mercy. Diggs. Look, let me tell you, this front seven is about to be nasty. It's only one question mark. And I'm getting ready to let y'all go. It's only one question mark remaining. Since we got all the bullets in the gun now. Can we stop the run? Because that's where people are going to attack us. With Gallimore coming back and all that, that's where people are going to attack us tomorrow. Can we stop Gibson? Can we stop J.D. McKissick? That's the only question. Can we stop the run? If we can do decent against the run, that's when you're about to see these hounds come up with these coming to uh, Mr. Heineken and and whoever, uh, Gannon from the Giants and Heineken again, and yes, even Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray going to be running for his life, okay? He's going to be running for his life too because you can't stop all this. Uh, Jalen Hurts, if he decide to come back, he going to get it too. I, I, this thing for to go to another level now. I'm expecting the defense to be the strongest point of this team from here all the way out, barring injury, of course. If the guy can stay healthy, this defense is about to take over this team. Uh, Joe said, can our offense score 30 points against Washington because our defense will ball out? My answer to that is yes, because if this pass rush is what I say it's going to be, your interceptions are going to come. You're going to get some strip sacks, and you're going to get the offense the ball again. You get these, you get this offense, extra possessions, we will score 30. Y'all realize Dak Prescott been scoring 30 points a long time with a bad, you know, with bad offensive line play and backups and no running game and still put up 30 points a game? Oh, my God, if this defense give them the ball two, three extra possessions, Oh my goodness! You you enter in the world of forty now. Oh, hold on a second, it's getting dark, and I know y'all think I'm y'all think I'm doing the sexy edition 
of the Big Time Show podcast with this, this darkness going on. I told you I'm in transit. Y'all hold on. <laughs> hey, there we go. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of glare there, but I'm in transition, y'all. Uh, Gary says 24 points is all we need. 24 points may be all it takes. See, watch it going to slow it down for us, y'all. Washington going to try to show it. Exactly. Gary's saying the way I was saying. They're going to show the game down because they figure we can't stop the run. They Their best player on offense, well, one of them is, is the, well, a couple of them are their running backs. Gibson and JD. They're going to run the football tomorrow. That's why I'm saying that's my only – pass rush is not my question. Pass rush is not the question. The question is – can we stop the run? That, that's the, that's my only question. We going to look, and we're going to find that out very early tomorrow. We're going to find that out real quick on tomorrow. All right? Uh, tomorrow, right after the game, for those that will, I'll be right here tomorrow, right after the game. Win, lose, or draw. Uh, I'm oh, my prediction. I'm sorry, I didn't give my prediction. Y'all go ahead and get your predictions in your head real quick. I'm asking for them. I got the Cowboys winning. Now let let me throw this in. Now I told you guys we have. To, well, I didn't say this earlier, but I'm saying it now. We have to match their intensity tomorrow for them. The playoffs start tomorrow for them. They have to win tomorrow. If if they don't win, it's a three-game lead. We're not losing a three-game lead. And then they got to come to Dallas. Not only is it a three-game lead, but we also have the tiebreaker because we beat them. Okay? Their playoffs start tomorrow. If they lose tomorrow, this division is just about over. They'll be, what, five and – Five and eight or whatever. No, there's six. There'll be six and seven tomorrow, and we'll be nine and four. Nah, it'll be over with. I hope we match their intensity. Their playoff start tomorrow. It does. And we need to be playing like our playoff start tomorrow because a division championship really, essentially, you know, to me, is on the line tomorrow for us. It's right there in front of our face. Just grab it. They'll be watching will be the closest team to us, and they'll be down three games to us. That's that's really it's all it's just about over with. It's a done deal. Yeah, we need to match them tomorrow. If we match their intensity tomorrow with all this talk about guarantees and the cowboys talking, they got their coach back and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, okay. As long as we match their intensity, we good. If we match their intensity, we're good. Intensity, I'm sorry. We match their intensity, we're good. Joe says 30-21. Gary says 30-14. I'm going 27-14. I don't think we're going to get to 30. Joe said, my brother would be at the game tomorrow with his positive jersey on. Joe, I promise you, your brother would not be the only one that would have a positive jersey on. If I was there, because I got mine, I might wear mine tomorrow, as a matter of fact. Parson, it's going to be plenty of Cowboy fans there. It always is in Washington. We we going to be there tomorrow. Cowboy fans will be in the house tomorrow. It's going to be plenty of Parsons jerseys. I got 27-14. I think the game will be short. And to be honest with you, I think that they, they're they not going to run for no 300 yards or 250 yards like they did against us last year. But I do believe that they still can get very close to 100, which is okay. Or right, or right at 100 or a little bit over or, or a little bit less. I believe they're going to they gonna do all right running, but they ain't, it's not going to be like it was last year. Um, 
and I think that we're going to get some turnovers tomorrow, and I think the offense is going to score. I think we're going to do 27-14. And don't be mad, y'all, because I'm already telling y'all. Dak Prescott is going to throw the ball right at 45 times tomorrow because we ain't going to run it. Kellen Moore going to give it up. Miller, oh, Miller got a close game. Miller think the Cowboys only going to win 21-17. He's like me as far as scoring-wise. I think the game going to be shortened. But he got it tight. He got it a little bit tight there. I said 27-14. Or 28-14, whichever one you want to go with. I think the defense is going to be too much. I really do. I really believe our defense is going to be too much. I really feel like that. All right. Is that it? Anybody else? Anybody else got a score for me? Anybody else? Code 23-19 on Podbean. What's up? Appreciate you joining in. I'm about to end it, but you got to score tomorrow for the Washington, I mean the Dallas-Washington game. We Cowboy fans over here. If you're a Cowboy hater, so be it. Just give me your score. <laughs> Washington fans, we want Dallas. The only thing they're getting is the hard <laughs> I ain't going to read it. Y'all read what Joe said. This is what Joe said. <laughs> Uh, what day? They ain't got to want long. We 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 there. We coming. Yep. Gary is on with me. Gary, well, Gary, I have my frat on here, my fraternity brother on here. Howard, he said, the kids, we got to stop the run. We got to stop the run, he said, which is no doubt. And we can't get behind. Uh-huh. Yeah, I agree. Gary's with me. Gary said Tony Gibson is going to be key for them to stop. I'm going to throw in Jay McKiss- J.D. McKissick with that also. Uh, he said, I believe it, Dak, 36 for f- out of 47 for 337 yards, three touchdowns. That sounds about right to me, Gary. He's going to throw the ball a lot tomorrow. Yeah. Got to stop. You can't come out sluggish. We got that's what I was saying before. We have to meet their intensity because it really is their playoff game start tomorrow. They they're playing desperate tomorrow, for real. They know if they don't win this game, they can go on start getting ready for, for wherever the draft gonna be at. They know that. You'll be what, six and eight, and we'll be nine and four with a few more weeks left. We're not losing no four game lead. Three and a half game lead. That's that's not gonna happen. So their playoff game started. We got to match it. They're gonna be hype. They're gonna be ready to play, and they and we're playing in their building. And they are desperate football team, trying to stay alive. Well, yeah, we got we got to st- we got to match their intensity, which ain't gonna be hard because everybody talking trash now. So that that talking see talking trash. For those of us that have played ball in any sport, talking trash adds extra get up in, in your system. It does. And for those of us that have been athletic and played anything, once folks start talking to you or, or you start joining in on the talking trash, your your intensity level goes up, your play goes up, and yes, even sometimes you might even make some mistakes. But uh, you, you, your your intensity level goes up with trash talk, and they're on both sides. They're talking trash, so I don't think it's gonna be hard not to, to be locked in early. I'm kind of glad McCarthy, even though he didn't mean the way the media is trying to portray it, but I'm kind of glad that he said what he said because what it did and what it's doing, obviously based off the way I saw Dak respond. And I heard what Amari Cooper respond. What it did is get a guy's focus. I, look, I love it. I love it. I, I That's what I want. So I ain't got no, you know, even though the media and, of course, all the haters have, have turned it into something that is not. But so be it. 
I love it. Let, 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 let's roll with it. I love it. I hope somebody, I'm expecting guys in warm ups to be talking trash tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised if they show the camera work. Somebody almost ready to get them a fight right there before the game start. I'm serious. This Cowboys against Washington. This is a rivalry game. They don't like us. We don't like them. You know, all y'all new Cowboy fans, please understand this is a hated rivalry. There ain't no love here at all. Especially if you've been a Cowboy fan for a long time. This ain't no shake hands, help somebody up, and all. No, 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 no. This is the type of game where you secretly step on them when you get up. Yeah, you, 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 you turn your head, but you know where your foot is, where it's going. That's the kind of rivalry it is. There ain't nothing pretty about this rivalry. You know, all the jersey swapping and all that kind of stuff. Now, look, please. It's the Cowboys against Washington. This 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 is a this is a heater. It made no difference, you know, when you when you when you line up against this team. It's like generations of Cowboys and generations of Redskins at that time. The Redskins, they're all coming right behind you. The ghost of Roger Staubach will be there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget Troy Aikman and. Michael Irvin and Emmy Smith. No, we talking about back then. Bob Lilly and Bob Hayes and 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 Two Tall Jones and Drew Pearson. Those ghosts will be there tomorrow. That that's how serious it is. Redskins side. Um, Art Monk and Daryl Green and John Riggins and Theisman and all those guys. Those those ghosts will be there tomorrow. They don't like us. We don't like them. We don't like them. I, I, I never liked the Washington thing. I don't like the Eagles. I don't like the Giants. And I despise the 49ers and the Steelers. These are the these are the the the, the these are the Thanos <laughs> and we the Avengers. These are the franchises we don't like. If you're a Cowboy fan, all I need to do is see you say amen. There are five franchises that if you're a real Cowboy fan, you do not like at all. Everybody in the division, we don't like them. And then the two outside, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the San Francisco 49ers, they have, to to me at least, the same amount of disgust that I have for Philly, Washington, and the Giants. Those are the five. If you're a real Cowboy fan, see, we, we don't plead though. I can't stand the Tennessee Titans. You just joined the Cowboys in two years ago then, you know. Yeah, you're a Cowboy fan, but if you if you talking about, I hate the Jacksonville Jaguars, man, look. You just, you, you just, you just got here. You ain't no, <laughs> you ain't no real Cowboy fan. I hate the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints ain't done nothing to us. Or you know, just just stop it. You you you're a cowboy fan, but you just you know you you you're really not a cow. Who you hate more, the Pittsburgh Steelers or the New Orleans Saints? I can't stand the Saints. I can't. No, you just you just got here. You know you <laughs> you you really not a cowboy fan. If you you can't stand the division, there ain't nothing pretty about it. And and if you're a real Cowboy fan, you can't stand the Steelers and the 49ers. That's 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 just automatic. Joe says I'm praying for a Cowboy win and our Cowboys stay healthy after this game. Yeah, if it, uh, it's good to have all these guys come back. Hopefully, we can keep them. Joe said I hate the Eagles with a passion. Exactly. Exactly. That's a division rivalry within itself. That's why I really like I now I, I'll leave y'all with this. That's why I really like the way the schedule is set up. And it's set up for everybody. See, when you have division rivals, intensity level and focus really shouldn't be a problem. And we got all we only thing we got is the Arizona Cardinals mixed in, you know, mixed in these last few weeks. Every other game, division game. You already know the focus should be there. 
So I I, I actually like the way the schedule is setting up because you're going to have to bring it every week now. And you already know it. And when you see that other team over there, you already know you're ready to play because you don't like the Eagles. You don't like the Giants. You don't like the Washington. Every one of those games, we, we never really have a problem getting up for. We had a problem last year. Now, of course, last year, our guys were hurt. And, of course, the Washington took advantage of it. Our guys are back now. So, let's go to work. All right? I'm done, man. I appreciate y'all. Uh, I will be with you tomorrow, uh, a little bit after the game on tomorrow. I hope you guys join me on tomorrow. Listen, if you uh, like the show, uh, you want to become a uh, premium member of this, um, all you have to do is type in that right there on your screen. Uh, the Big Time Show 3.supercast.tech. If you're on Podbean, uh, you want to become a member or a contributor to the show, uh, that red bag there that's on your computer or on your phone, all you have to do is join in, make a decision. Uh, hopefully you will and support me in that way. If not, it's okay. Uh, if you are here on uh, looking at me on Facebook or whatever or on Twitch, it's right there for you. Just, uh, just type that in and make a decision and uh, hopefully you will support your boy here in, in the podcast. All right. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, I will see you. Joe, I appreciate you joining in from Italy, man. Get you some sleep uh, tomorrow right after the game. Uh, I'll be with you. The only regret I have is that this game is not on a Sunday night for the whole world to see. I wish this was some type of way flexed to a Sunday night game. I wish it was. Uh, I mean, the, the elements are all there. Trash talk, division rival possible uh goodbye to the nfc east for real with a win washington if they win they're they're back in it i mean it's a lot of lot of little subplots i wish it was a sunday night game but the the butt whipping what ha- happened at 12 o'clock or at seven o'clock it don't make no difference we ready to play i can't wait till tomorrow all right i'll see you guys tomorrow a little bit after the game Either I'm going to come to you shaking my head like this or I'm going to come to you laughing and giggling and say, I told you so. Then I tell y'all this defense is going to take over. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to come to you. It's either I'm going to be like this, like, God, man. Yeah, Joe said, hope the refs call a clean game. And, you know, ain't nothing we can do about that. All we got to do is just play. All right? But regardless, however what go on, I'll be here. I will see you tomorrow as we leave. Y'all know what to do. Come on, put your hands together. This is, I'll see you tomorrow, the big time show. Pie bean. Yeah. Put your hands together, pie bean. Cold 2319. If you're still here, it's time you here. Put your hands together for the one and only the big time.